93.9 MIA Rhythm from the 80s to now. I'm Gigi Diaz. I am so excited. We have a legend in the studio today, guys. Singer, songwriter, musician, and even radio personality, Rick Astley. Oh, my goodness. What an honor to have you here. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's my pleasure to be here. Welcome to the show. I got to tell you, we play your music all the time here on 93.9 MIA. Our listeners are always requesting it. We've we've been carried through so many decades with your songs. Songs like She Wants to Dance With Me, of course, never going to give you up. How do you feel about coming to perform your music for us here in Miami? Uh, I'm really excited. Um, I was in Miami quite recently. In fact, I was in Miami about this time last year because um, I had my birthday and our daughter had her birthday in Miami. Then we went to the Florida Keys and we loved it, to be honest. It's a great city. Uh, so it's nice to come back and sing those old songs. And, and to be honest, it's the first time I've toured in America for years and years. So yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. Good. We're excited to have you. Rick, you retired in 1993, right, with uh, what, 40 million records sold worldwide, definitely a successful career. What brought you back? Um, a number of things. About 10 years ago, I had an offer to go to Japan and sing my old songs. And I'd always kind of said no to the different offers I've had because, you know, I just felt it was a different time. I was a different guy then, all the rest of it. Anyway, yada, yada. My wife and our daughter made me go to Japan because they wanted to go to Japan. <laughs> so uh, we went as a family and we had, a, we had a week holiday in Japan, which is an amazing place, but not somewhere that most of us are ever going to pick to go on holiday. If you know, It's not a normal holiday destination. And uh, we just had a great time. But the thing for me, it was like unlocking, it was like a key that unlocked something and just said, look, you can do this and have fun with it. It doesn't have to take over your life. Um, and that's the way I've been doing it since. I am a bit busier now than I was then. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But no, I'm still, I'm just doing what I want to do. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's the key to it. It's just finding a place in life where you can do the things you want to do, you know, so. Definitely good advice. And and finding that balance, right? Because you can't let go of something you love. I'm sure the feeling that you get when you're on stage with a mob of people in front of you singing along to your music, that must be unlike anything else in the world, right? It is, it is. And I think if you ask anybody who's been in that position or is in that position, it's hard to describe, to be honest, because I, I literally do think it's a, a chemical thing in your body. I think your adrenaline kicks in. And even though on the one end you can be as calm as a cucumber, cool as a cucumber before you go on, when you get on there, just things change because you interact with human beings and you can see that they're enjoying it and then that refuels you enjoying it. So, yeah, it's pretty special to me. It's not like anything else that I've ever done in my life, to be honest. Let's talk about the craziness that happened on the Internet. You took over the thing. We're all familiar with the memes, the uh, the Rick Rowling pranks. You became an Internet sensation when you came back in uh, 2007. So much so that even YouTube jumped on the whole thing and uh, did an April Fool's. Did it ever drive you crazy, that all this fun no. interaction with your music? Or were you like, this is to, pretty cool? No, to be honest, it's never driven me crazy. I look at it as a positive thing because there's of kids who have heard some of my old tunes obviously never going to give you up but they've heard some of the old tunes and they're kind of getting into certain things from the 80s you know not just me obviously but loads of stuff because that's what the internet has done it's kind of it's given a new energy to a lot of different periods of music there's still guys in garages and the first songs they're trying to learn are you know whether it be Def Leppard or whether it be you know uh, ACDC or what have you or whether it be something you know, more pop, you know, or, or getting into Depeche Mode or, mode or whatever it is. And I think that that's, I think that's really, really an amazing thing that, that older artists have had, is that we, it's given a rebirth to a lot of songs. And some of those songs are amazing. Some of that music is great. And all too often, um, it gets left behind. And I think the internet has kind of, you know, rebooted a lot of those things. So for me, I just look at it as positive. And, the, and there's been some really funny ones, let's face it. Some of them have been hilarious, you know. So <laughs> I, think, I think the White House Rick rolled itself at one point, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I don't know whether that'd be happening right now. There's a lot of things going on in the White House, but we won't talk about that. But I just think that, you know, it's, yeah, it's nuts, I think, to have a song that's kind of filtered into so many things. So On Tuesday, Rick, you're going to be at one of my favorite spots here in South Florida, the Adrian Arts Center, doing a concert. Tell me, what can we expect from this show? Well, I had a new record um, uh, out in the UK last year, and uh, believe it or not, we had a number one album in the UK, which was pretty freaky, to be honest. I mean, I was not expecting that, and I don't think anybody around me was. And so, obviously, we've been playing some of those new songs in different parts of the world, and we're playing them here in America. But obviously, I'm not stupid. We're going to play any of the hits I had in America. We'll be playing them. We're playing some songs from those first few albums. Because I think, to be fair, that's my name on the ticket, and that's who I am. You know, those songs, they belong to me. They're part of my DNA. You know what I mean? So I, I feel... I do feel obliged to play them, but I want to play them because they're like a suit of armor as well. Do you know what I mean? That's, without those, I would never have been able to make a new record. Do you know what I mean? So... 
it's a bit of a balance, really. I, I throw in some new ones, but we mainly stick to trying to keep the audience happy. So that's that's what I see as my job, really. Now let's talk about this this new Rick Astley and the new music that you're going to show us on Tuesday. How would you say you, this new album that, like you said, is number one right now in the UK, how does it compare to the music that we're used to? Um, I think, it, to be honest, it's probably the most honest record I've ever made in my life in terms of I, I wrote all the songs, I played all the instruments, and I produced it all. I did it all at my home studio. And I think because of that, I didn't have a record label kind of breathing down my neck, telling me to do this or wanting me to do this. So I think lyrically, I've just put things into the songs that are a bit more personal. It's about me growing up as a kid and then even part of, you know, about writing about things that happened in my career, you could say. And um, so I think I kind of, it's a bit more personal. Uh, it's a little bit gospel tinged here and there because I've always loved singing with different choirs that I've done that over the years and stuff. But it's pop songs at the end of the day because I like pop music. You know, I, I like hooks, I like melodies. So, but like I say, I'm not going to bore everybody to death. I kind of sneak the new ones in when no one's looking. Uh, don't <laughs> worry, I will be playing the old ones. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, listen, just because we've had some success in the UK, uh, we did have another one album with it, like I say, and that's amazing. But I just think... You've got to be. You've got to have some perspective on it. America's a big place. Nobody really knows I've got that record out for so much yet. So we need to kind of work on that. But uh, I'm, to be honest, I'm just enjoying it. It's the first time I've been to America to tour for years and years and years, and um, so many places that you know uh, I perhaps didn't even get to go to and stuff. So. You know, to come back to Miami and play after all these years is going to be crazy, to be honest. Well, we're very excited to have you at the Adrian Arch. T tickets are already on sale. You can check them out at the website for the Adrian Arch Center, or you can just win them on our website, 939mia.com. Register to win tickets to check out Rick Astley on Tuesday at the Adrian Arch. Rick, it's such an honor to be able to talk to you. Thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, come on, Miami. Let's have a good time. Absolutely. It's Gigi Diaz on 939 MIA rhythm from the 80s to now.